Well, I've been making little films and stuff since I was about 10, um, and they sort of gradually got bigger and, and better. And then when I was 16 and my first feature, I had uh, that came out, which was um, Charlie's Letters. And then that obviously got quite a bit of traction and stuff, so I've been able to move on and, and, and do Vindication Swim after that, yeah. No, I've never had any formal training other than, other than watching movies, really. That's, that's, that was my film school, yeah. And I think that's all you need, really. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'll study films or I'll watch them with the audio commentary on with the director speaking and stuff. And I think things like that are just invaluable for people who want to who want to become filmmakers and stuff, because you can learn so much that way. In finance, terms of financing, uh, I, in my spare time I rob banks, so that's how I, I get the money. Um, but yeah, luckily from Charlie's Letters we were able to get a bit of a budget going, so um, yeah, we picked, it's a, it's a tiny budget still, but we have some, some money on this one, which is of course a good thing. Yeah, I have done a bit of that. I did some advert work and things, but um, I haven't done anything for the moment. I mean, there's been so much work on this film that I, I can't take other jobs at the moment. It, it's all hands on board with this one. I think because it's such an inspiring story, really. I mean, she's from Brighton, so she's a local. Uh, I'm, I'm from Brighton, and the whole crew's from Brighton, so it's a very local kind of project in that sense. Um, and I mean, what she did was incredible. I mean, as a woman in the 1920s to be able to swim the channel, it was no easy feat. I mean, even today, more people have climbed Everest than have actually successfully swum across the English Channel. So I think it is just an inspiring story. And it's been completely forgotten, which is such a terrible shame. So if I can help, you know, get her name back out there, I mean, that can only be a good thing. Yeah, well, I mean, we set out casting about two years ago. Some of the actors I knew before from other projects and things, so we brought them back on and then uh, some new faces as well. But I mean, locations are easy because we're just filming out there for quite a bit of it. So, um, I mean, logistically, that's really challenging because we have to, the weather has to be all right and, and things like that. And obviously, safety is a very crucial aspect. And now COVID's obviously thrown into the mix as well. So, it, it is a bit of a headache, but it, it's all paying off. Yeah. Well, anything on land is now easy compared to filming out at sea. There's no other way to put it, really. I mean, I have no respect for anybody who says filming on land is difficult because they have not been out at sea. So that's where the challenge is. Uh, we have a bit of that. The sort of ethos behind the film is that it's kind of, a, like I said, a local project. So people from the community, they've been really supportive and helpful in terms of, of gaining access to locations and things like that. So we've been able to pull on vintage car owners and things like that. So they're all happy to come on board and, uh, and help out at no cost, which is how we've been able to do such a, a high budget film, if you like, on such a small budget. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we've got some wonderful behind the scenes uh, stills and things from the movie. So, yeah, I mean, things like that are just invaluable. You, you, you can't really have the film without that, I don't think. Yeah, I mean, it's all, it's all light run and gun stuff, really, because, I mean, filming out at sea, it all goes back to filming out at sea. So, um, yeah, it all has to be quite light and easy to transport because there's only a limited amount of space on the boat and things like that. So we're shooting on a a, a Canon 77D with a Sigma lens on it, um, which I mean isn't the most high-tech camera in the world, but it gets beautiful shots and that's all I need really. Well, because of um, the COVID situation and all that, the editing we've sort of been doing, we could kind of caught up with the editing during, during lockdown because I mean there was, there was not much else to do. So, um, so we, we, yeah, it kind of worked weird in that respect. So we kind of skipped part of the production stage, did some post-production, now we're back in production. So it's worked quite nicely really because we've been able to sort of sit and refine what we've done and, and really figure out what we actually need to shoot from now on. So yeah, it's kind of all been topsy-turvy with how we've done it. Yeah, Cannes is the aim for this one. So in, in 2022, we hope to show it at Cannes, yeah, as part of the festival. Uh, there are some small wheels turning, but uh, I'm mostly focusing on this one because it's such a big project, so I can't be distracted by other things at the moment. But yeah, there's some small wheels turning in the background.
practice. Just pick up the camera and shoot something. I mean, literally shoot anything and then try and make a, a, a bit of a narrative out of it. I think that's the, the best experience you can get, really. Just trial and error, practice things and, and see what you capture. Yeah, that would be my advice. <laughs>